How is a coil spring made that is going to perfectly suit your four-wheel drive? In this video, we're going to take you for a tour through a coil spring manufacturing factory. I'm going to show you every step of the process and explain to you why that process is important to you, the four-wheel driver. Now, in the interest of disclosure, this content was filmed for Terrain Tamer four-wheel drive and we've repurposed it with their permission to suit you, the MadMap four-wheel drive YouTube audience. Here at MadMap 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four-wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you can get those notifications. Anyway, let's get into it. So it all starts here, where the X5K high-stress spring steel, it comes in on rolls, gets onto this big drum here. They weigh well over a tonne, and then they get fed on down to the next station, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, why would you use such an expensive, high quality spring steel? Well, if you were to buy a lesser spring and you want to do the same job as the Terrain Tamer spring, you need more steel and therefore you need more wraps in the coil spring. So that gives us an issue in a four wheel drive world. When our suspension goes into full compression, we have a lot more steel that we've got to jam into that space. And therefore we can have a situation where coil bind happens. Well, when we use a higher quality steel, we don't need as much steel in the spring. Therefore, we have more space for the material that we are using. Therefore, we avoid coil bind. That is a significant advantage. The other advantage is that per corner, you get around about two kilograms of weight saving in the unsprung weight. And that does make a, a bit of a difference to the way the vehicle handles as well. Righto, let's head on down to the next station and see what happens next. This is where the bar gets peeled on the bar peeling machine. This is $2 million worth of wheels and gears and cool stuff that essentially takes a peel of half a millimetre off the bar. Why is that important? Well, you imagine this bar comes in those big rolls and it's come from the factory and it's been chained onto trucks and it's being lifted by forklifts. And within all of that process, there can be minute nicks and damage to the bar that will cause a stress riser if they're not dealt with it. What's a stress riser? Well, that's a point where the metal can break and fatigue if it's not dealt with. So this machine is all about peeling half a millimeter off the outside diameter of the spring steel. That's going to give us a really nice piece of material that can now go and be made into a coil spring. But this machine also does something else, which is really cool. Because it's CNC controlled and inside the main head, there are four cutters that rotate around the bar at around about 3000 RPM. This machine can taper that bar any way that they would like it to be tapered. And that is the innovation that gives them the progressive rate coil. So the next stage is over here and it's the furnace. Things are about to heat up. So now that the bars have been skinned alive, well, peeled actually, but anyway, they're ready for the furnace. So this is a natural gas CNC controlled furnace that is running at 980 degrees. So these bars are gonna get in there, they're gonna get stinking hot, and then they're gonna head over to where they're actually made into a coil spring. Let's go and have a look. So the bars now come out of the furnace and come over to this machine. This is the coil winding machine and it's computer controlled. And that means that the progressive rate coil spring can really start to come to life. Now you remember I was talking over at the peeling machine, how that machine can taper the bar and make any sort of taper. So that means we can have a thick bit of wire here and a thin bit of wire at the top, for example. You bring that and put it on this machine, you're gonna really get a cool result. You see, this machine can make the coil windings, either a lot of them at the top and a few of them at the bottom or any other variation we're looking for, this machine can do it. You couple that innovation with the tapered bar you've now got a very cool coil spring that can be tight at the top and hard at the bottom or whatever you want. It all happens when it gets to here. Now, after this, that coil spring now heads on over to the 
fiery pit of hell, which is the quenching machine. Let's go and find out what happens over here. This step is called quenching and it's really critical. You see, when the coil spring comes off the coil winding machine, it's got a hardness, which is measured in Rockwell, of 33, which is really a bit like spaghetti. So it'd be absolutely useless to us. But when we put it in the quenching machine in this oil bath, which is sitting at about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, that hardens the steel. In fact, it actually makes it too hard. It becomes brittle. But that's where the tempering process comes in. So now that the coil springs have come out of the quenching bath, they've cooled down, but they've become too hard. Go figure, do these guys know what they're doing? Absolutely they do. You see, now that they're too hard, they can be brought back up to a temperature in a tempering process. That temperature is over 400 degrees, but here's the thing, the moment the coil spring hits that precise temperature, they achieve the hardness that is required so that they can do the job they're designed for. To make the coil spring fit the vehicle, oftentimes they need to be ground flat on one or both ends of the coil spring. So that's what this machine does. This process is called the shot peening process. Essentially, the springs go in that end and they work their way through the machine on a couple of rollers. And from every direction, they get blasted with shot. And why this is important is as the spring is wound and, and molded, the tensions on the outside of the spring and on the inside of the spring mean that the spring structure is not happy. It's in tension here and it's in compression there. By doing this shot peening process, we relieve all of the tension out of the spring and the spring goes, oh, I've found my happy place. There's another process we need to look at and it's called the scragging process. Let's have a look. So let's talk about the scragging process. This is where we take the coil spring and we compress it down until it will spring no more. That's a condition we call coil bind. Now when we release the spring, it's going to have a new free height. That's the height of the spring when it's not doing any work. It's just sitting there. You see, when the spring is made, it has a free height. And if it doesn't go through the coil scragging process, and we were to put that spring into our vehicle, a couple of days later, the vehicle would sag. And we'd go, what happened to my suspension lift? So in manufacture, they do that process for it, which is the scragging process. Now, when this coil spring is put in our vehicle, it will hold that height for the life of the coil spring. That's why the scragging process is so important. Now let's head on over and start finishing these coil springs off. So these coil springs are gonna live under our four wheel drive vehicles and they're gonna be subject to abuse. Mud, water, salt water, salt spray. If they're in the mines, all of the acidic and, and alkaline environment that they're exposed to, they just get absolutely hammered. So how do you protect all of that fantastic innovation that's been put into the steel. And that's where putting them through these baths, which gives them a phosphate coating, gives them the protection that they need. And now we come to the last step in making a terrain tamer coil spring, and that's the powder coating process. They use an epoxy powder coat, so that gives it a fantastic finish that's going to protect that coil spring, but also makes it look fantastic under your four wheel drive. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trail.